morning. My name is Matt Hadley, and I'm the senior pastor here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. And what I always like to say on the very first Sunday of the new year is, way to go. You've done it. Perfect worship attendance for the year 2022. Keep it up. Keep it up. But it is good to gather together on a uh, snowy weekend, and yet it is nice and warm in here, and it's more than just the temperature. There is the warmth of community of faith. Um, We take prayer very seriously here, and the telephone number for us to text in any items of joy or concern, and I know that I have heard many uh, throughout this week, um, 262-305-4311, 262-305-4311. This is a communion Sunday, and we don't have any of our PowerPoint uh, today, so if you did not receive your bulletin, or your communion kit, please raise your hand and Barry will faithfully bring those uh, to you. Those are going to be our key tools for us this day. If you're wondering, well, wait a minute, I'm at home. I don't have these materials on our Facebook page. You can find all of the links that we need, all of the litany and the hymns that are going to be sung. I invite you, if you are at home, to create a space for worship. Light a candle. And be prepared for communion. Have some bread or cracker, some juice, and some wine so that when we here um, in the sanctuary are partaking of uh, communion, that you'll be able to be a part of that with us. Now, this is a different kind of service. This is Epiphany Sunday, and that is a day in which the church remembers the visitation of the Magi, the three kings, the, the three wise men. And I felt like we really kind of talked about that on Christmas Eve. And we know that those wise men brought three different kinds of gifts, gifts fit for a king, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the gift that we all bring with us as we enter into a brand new year is the gift of our covenant, our covenant with the God of covenant. And covenant is different than contract. Covenants are eternal. Contracts time out. And so what we're going to experience here this morning is what is known as a covenant renewal service or the Wesleyan Covenant Service. And in London, which is where John Wesley and Charles Wesley, whose hymnody we're going to be uh, partaking in today, in London it was always held on New Year's Day. And the Wesleys really enjoyed that. As a matter of fact, even when it wasn't New Year's Day, when John Wesley would go and visit another uh, Methodist uh, uh, community, he would oftentimes have this covenant service. As the Methodist movement made its way to the United States, many churches hold this service on New Year's Eve, and we call it a watch night service. Now, the language that we are going to be using is maybe a little bit different than we typically use here week in, week out at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. It is taken from our tradition. And so maybe some of the language, some of the the titles for God maybe aren't the title that you would use. Maybe being forced to out loud kind of... uh, Admit, confess sin is something that we're uncomfortable with, but I pray that this will be a blessing to you. So yes, this service may be different, but we are entering into a brand new year that we are hoping will indeed be different. Who here doesn't want 2022 to be different than what we just experienced in 2021? And so our sermon series as we begin this brand new year is titled just that, This year is going to be different, and today we're looking at a new covenant, a new commitment, but we're going to move on with a new vision, with new understandings, new attitudes, and new practices. And so I hope that you'll be with us, or if you're unable to be here in-house, that you'll worship with us, as many of you are today at home. And of course, we always post those on our website, and so you can watch them at any time, even if it's a week or two later. Now, when this service is done, if you so choose, I'm going to stay up here on the front step, I will have my mask on, and I have some anointing oil. So if you'd like to begin this brand new year with an anointing coming out of this covenant renewal service, you are invited to do just that. Everyone, whether you're a member of this church or not, is welcome to be a part of the communion experience. And of course, we're all God's children. 
and God seeks to anoint us all with, with the Spirit. And so as we are willing and able, I invite you to stand, and we are going to begin with uh, one of our first hymn, which is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. As we turn the page, I invite us to remain standing for our opening prayer. And so let us pray these words together. O oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and enter anew into covenant with you, Reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. And so let us give thanks for all God's mercies. O oh God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. We, we praise, praise your, your holy, holy name, name, O God. And reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and ministered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. We, we praise, praise your, your holy name, O oh God. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us your peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the witness of your church. We, we praise, praise your, your holy name, name, O God. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adver adversary and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy in our joys and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. We praise your holy name, O God. You have remembered us when we forgot you. You have followed us even when we tried to flee from you. 
you met us with forgiveness when we returned to you. For all your patience and overflowing grace, we, we praise, praise your holy name, O oh God. And so let us join our voices together in the hymn, Come, let us use the grace divine. Would you pray with me? Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Second Chronicles. Then the king sent word and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people, both great and small. He read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. The king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, keeping his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. Then he made all who were present in Jerusalem and in Benjamin pledge themselves to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem acted according to the covenant of God, the God of their ancestors. Joshua took away all the abominations from all the territory that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were in Israel Worship the Lord their God. All his days they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their ancestors. We give thanks for the word of God. And we hear the power in just hearing the covenant 
read aloud. And all the people basically said, here I am. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today, however, we meet as the generations before us have met to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then, there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let, Let me be your servant, servant under your, your command. command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation to those who obey. Christ will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything accept full consent to all that he requires. Christ will be all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by a holy covenant. To make this covenant a reality in your life, listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time, more than once, to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you, in carefully thinking through all the conditions of the covenant, in searching your hearts, whether you have already freely given your life to Christ, consider what your sins are, consider the laws of Christ, how holy, strict, and spiritual they are, and whether you, after having carefully considered them, are willing to choose them all. Be sure you are clear in these matters. See that you do not lie to God. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength 
so you can keep your promise. Trust not your own strength and power. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given to the Lord your hearts. You have opened your mouths to the Lord, and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. And last, be then prepared to renew your covenant with the Lord. Fall down on your knees. Lift your hands toward heaven. Open your hearts to the Lord as we pray. And please join together in this covenant prayer. O oh, righteous, righteous God, God for the for sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, see me as I fall down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. God requires that you shall put away all your idols. I hear from the bottom of my heart, renounce them all, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. Against your will, I have turned my love toward the world. In your power, I will watch all temptations that will lead me away from you. For my own righteousness is riddled with sin, unable to stand before you. Through Christ, God has offered to be your God again, if you would let him. Before, Before all heaven, heaven and earth, I here acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for my portion, and vow to give up myself, body and soul, as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. God has given the Lord Jesus Christ as the only way and means to coming to God. Jesus, I do here accept Christ as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with him. O oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you, hungry, sinful, miserable, blind and naked, unworthy even to wash the feet of your servants, I do here, with all my power, accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord, my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. Christ has told you that you must suffer with him. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Through your grace, I promise that neither life nor death shall part me from you. God has given holy laws as the rule of your life. I do here willingly put my neck under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. I therefore take them as the rule for my words, thoughts, and actions, promising that I will strive to order my whole life according to your direction and not to allow myself to neglect anything I know to be my duty. The Almighty God searches and knows your heart. O oh God, you know that I make this covenant with you today without guile or reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide me and help me to set it aright. And now, glory be to you, O oh God the Father, whom I from this day forward shall look upon as my God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, 
who have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and now is my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power have turned my heart from sin to God. Almighty God, the Lord omnipotent, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have now become my covenant friend, and I, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant that I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us join in a time of silent and listening prayer. On this Epiphany Sunday, as we enter into 2022, we long for and pray for the light of God in Christ Jesus to drive back the darkness of human error, misery, and evil. Where people are lost and jaded in contemporary consumerism, where addiction to alcohol other drugs, and gambling is causing ruin. We pray for the hope of epiphany. Where dictators rule without mercy or wisdom, where democracies are manipulated by the rich and powerful, we pray for the justice of epiphany. Where youth see no prospect in the future, and so contemplate suicide. Where the long-term unemployed exist without hope. We pray for the light of epiphany. Where the church dodges its evangelical mission, where the church evades its social and political responsibility, we pray for the truth of epiphany. Where the terminally ill face, face death fearfully, where people without purpose face life despairingly, we pray for the love of epiphany. Almighty God, hear a prayer for Chelsea Montague, who is going to have surgery this week to have a mass removed from her abdomen. Lord, be with all those family and friends who have tested positive after holiday celebrations. We pray for an end of COVID variants. Lord, hear a prayer of joy for a niece, Lizzie, and her husband, David, as they start their life together after a New Year's Eve wedding. Hear prayers for a friend named John, who has just learned that he has stage four pancreatic cancer. Hear prayers for a friend whose mother passed away last night. Bring comfort and peace. For all the prayers that we don't know how to verbalize, we give you thanks, Almighty God, that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. These are the prayers of your people this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Most Holy One, to you all souls are precious. Please take from our eyes the scales of prejudice or indifference that we may increasingly share your awareness of the neglected and abused people and do all we can to make your love real to them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. And so this is a brand new month, and as we prepare to give to God our offerings, we uh, want to have an opportunity to be introduced to what our coins and designated mission funds are going to be going to this month of January. And here to help us understand where our mission dollars are going this month is Mike Rupp. Good morning. I'm here as a representative of the University Christian Ministries, which is at UWM. Uh, I'm on the board. Um, I have a couple Q&A kinds of things that people have asked me. You know, what does University Christian Ministries, UCM, do? Uh, they work with students at UWM to discover explore, experience, and grow their faith as a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're a multi-denomination organization. Besides the United Methodist, there are four other Protestant denominations who help support UCM. Uh, what does UCM do? Well, one of the big things is we offer some lunches, some free lunches, which are very popular with students. Uh, obviously, during the pandemic, the in two years ago, we did handout lunches at the door. Now they've gone back to in-person and gradually we are increasing our attendance for those lunches. Uh, we're, I think we're up to 50 at last count and we'll, of course, be starting a new semester very soon. So if someone says there's no such thing as a free lunch, they're lying to they us. They are lying. We, there are free lunches. In fact, the free lunches, uh, we, again, we depend on a lot of volunteer support. We only have a half-time campus minister. And one of the things, the denominations, uh, the supporting churches, and ours is one of them, provide the lunches, bring the lunches in that our staff at, at the UCM can then serve uh, on those days. Um, as I said, we have a very, we're a very small uh, half-time minister. We have some student help. We do depend on the churches bringing the lunches in and on members uh, serving on our boards. Like I said, I'm on the board. Pat Kissinger's on the board, and so is Dick Steinmetz from our church. Um, I appreciate your support. You can check us out. If you want to get more information, I'll be around after the service. You can look up our website, and we do appreciate your support for the Loose Change offering this month. Thank you. Thank you. And so may God find in us uh, joy-filled givers as we give our tithes, our offerings, and our funds for mission. <music>
Almighty God, as we enter into a brand new year, we just continue to thank you for the ways in which you enable us to be stewards of everything entrusted to us. So, Almighty God, bless us this year. Bless our offerings. Bless our mission giving. May it make a real difference in the lives of people who need it so desperately. In the name of Christ, we ask this. Amen. And so I'm going to invite you to remain standing. And we have another hymn, uh, Blessed Assurance 369. And many of you who grew up in a traditional church uh, know the refrain already. But if you, if you don't, unfortunately, you have to turn the page to get to the refrain and come back uh, for the stanzas. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy are you, Father. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And so we know that 
on the night ultimately that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread as he was gathered with his closest followers. And he said a prayer and then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And that loaf made, it, made its way all around the table. When supper was over, he took one of the containers of wine. He said a prayer of thanksgiving. And then he said something that is very fitting for us in this covenant renewal service. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, we know that means for life everlasting. And so, yes, we are grateful that this meal has sustained the life of the Christian church from that day forward. And so, mighty God, send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Through him, with him, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And so let us join our voices together as covenant people in lifting up the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I invite you to remove the thin cellophane on top, revealing the wafer. And I invite you to take and eat the body of Christ our Lord given for you. And as we open up the cup of blessing for the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting, I say, drink in remembrance of him. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, God knows what humanity is all about. God took our flesh. And yet the flesh that God took in the form of Emmanuel, Jesus the Christ, lived a perfect life. That you and I are men and women who stumble and fall repeatedly. And yet every time we fall, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can get back up and we can renew our covenant we can make an intentional decision to live our lives with a Christ-like discipleship. We can decide each and every day to walk so closely the path that Jesus is leading us in that we are in that old saying, covered in the dust of the rabbi. But we would say we are covered in the dust of our Savior as we are his hands and feet. And so before we sing where he leads me, I want us to take just a moment of silence and give you an opportunity in your own way to approach your God, to renew your covenant, and to be open to have God lay something brand new on your heart. Let's pause for just a moment of prayer. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. 
I'll go with him, with him all the way. Amen. I invite you to stand. Let's join together in stanzas one and four of where he leads me, I will follow. So just a reminder, brothers and sisters, that before you leave the sanctuary on this first Sunday of the new year, if you'd like to come and to have an anointing, I will stay up here on the front step and use this anointing oil to make the sign of the cross upon your forehead. Our office is going to be closed uh, tomorrow, and then on Friday evening, we're going to have our Taizé service in here. It's a beautiful service if you've not been a part of that. If you'd like to take a poinsettia, especially if you purchased one as a gift to the church, they're at the feet of Jesus right by the front door, and uh, we would hopefully they can beautify some homes before they, they lose their, their zeal. And then next week, uh, we will continue in um, this year's going to be different by taking a look at new visions at 9 and 1030. And so, brothers and sisters, our God is the God of covenant. We have not made a contract that's going to time out with our God. No, we have made a covenant that is eternal. And thanks be to God for that. And so as you burst out into the world, follow, follow, follow. Amen and go in peace. Amen.